The airlift of three rescued loggerhead turtles has been something of a nail-biter. And the looming ice storm barreling up the East Coast, threatening to derail today's departure, is just the latest peril for Biscuits, the oldest and largest of the evacuees. From the start, back in November, when Biscuits arrived in the New England Aquarium's Marine Animal Rescue and Rehab Center in Quincy, Massachusetts, the odds were stacked against her. When she came in, she was covered in mud, sand, uh, algae, and huge barnacles. Back then, Biscuits was known as number 48. That's out of 88 sea turtles rescued from beaches on Cape Cod this season by staff and volunteers with the Mass Audubon Society. All of the animals required critical care for problems that develop when sea turtles are caught in cold water. Their issues range from pneumonia to shock. Every fall, the aquarium prepares for a deluge of sick sea turtles. This is a, what, what we sort of call a, a mass casualty unit. If you look at a map of the Cape, there's that long arm that sticks out uh, that goes all the way to the tip of P-Town. It might just be counterintuitive to their built-in navigation system to go that far north. They're trying to go south. The result is that New England Aquarium by far gets the majority of cases of cold stunned turtles for the entire country. Most of the sea turtles trapped are young and fairly small. That's obviously not the case with biscuits. Biscuits is probably the most important turtle. They're all endangered, they're all important, but only one in 1,000 turtles makes it from the egg stage to the size turtle that Biscuits is now. At nearly 200 pounds, Biscuits is the largest loggerhead rescued here in 15 years. She's likely between 15 and 25 years old. As we watch her gliding around her tank, we're struck by a certain soulfulness in her expression. Is that ascribing a human attribute to a turtle? Well, have a look and decide yourself. A lot has happened to Biscuits that we'll never know, but she's fortunate to have ended up in this turtle hospital. Any of these turtles would have died um, if, they, if they didn't get out of the cold and come here for treatment. Once a week they get um, removed from the tanks and we reweigh them, make sure that they're going up, and we check any previously known injuries, and we look for anything that might be developing. Some of the turtles even receive laser treatments, which might just help with pain management. During one of these sessions, this time with a Kemp's Ridley turtle, we see how exquisitely tuned into turtles members of the staff are. When this little guy waves his flippers, his caretaker employs a clever turtle trick. She gently pushes up on his chin to calm him. All of this work is in preparation for the longer range plan of getting them down to warm waters around Georgia. I was really nervous about putting that large turtle through a very lengthy ground transport. As it turns out, the aquarium called on a guardian angel, one who can fly, and Biscuit's travel is booked. The morning of her flight, which begins before dawn, is run with military precision. Two smaller turtles, numbers 84 and 87, who are traveling with Biscuits, are loaded into crates, and then it's time for the big girl. It takes six people to pull this off. Time might be short, but turtle comfort is the priority here. And Connie is intuitive about Biscuit's state of mind. Just want to give her a minute. When calm enough, Biscuits is loaded into a heated van and driven in a caravan toward a small airport nearby. The big girl is really worked up. She hasn't stopped flapping around and um, she seems pretty stressed out. At the airport, we meet Tom Haas, aviator and philanthropist. He's a board member and volunteer pilot for Lighthawk, a national nonprofit consortium of private pilots who donate their time, planes, and gas to benefit conservation causes. They've been around for 35 years, helping with everything from environmental landscape surveys to transporting troubled species, including condors, wolves, and cougars. Today's transport requires a big plane and Tom's Pilatus PC-12 fits the bill. The plan for today is to get biscuits into the hands of sea turtle experts in Georgia, who will release her as soon as the water down south is warm enough. The team that has doctored biscuits waves goodbye. And soon, Boston is in the distance. On board, videographer Kristen Gogan and I are excited to be helping biscuits on her way.
During our flight, Tom leaves the controls to Nathan Brown for a few minutes. He comes back to talk about his passion for conservation. Uh, I've always been an environmentalist all my life. He's flown many missions for Lighthawk, and he pulls out his phone to share photos of some beautiful wolves he's had on board. That's very exciting. Uh, beautiful, beautiful wolves. So we carry about five uh, crates and uh, just be relocated for uh, breeding purposes or to let go into the wild. We start making our descent, and now, finally below the clouds, we see the shoreline of St. Simon's Island. Biscuit seems to detect something, too. Magnetic fields? Air pressure? No one knows. A team from the Georgia Sea Turtle Center is waiting on the tarmac. It's unusually cold and windy here today, and the transfer has to be quick. But it isn't without emotion. <laughs> and when the van door shut, we say farewell to our big turtle. Bye, biscuits. We head back to Boston feeling good. Tonight when I go home, I'll think about these turtles and, and that I've really done something uh, nice for them, you know, and let them continue on their adventure in life. Though we couldn't be with her when she was released weeks later, we cried when we saw this video sent to us by our friends at the Georgia Sea Turtle Center. Biscuits is back where she belongs. <laughs>